gang, what's up? Welcome back here to another edition of Intuitive Angling and really thank you guys for carving out a little time in your day to check the video out, it's much appreciated. Today guys, we're gonna give you some new details on the Whopper Plopper. I'm gonna share some hacks with you guys on it, give you guys sort of a refresher course and sort of cover the uh, summer and early fall, which is the prime Whopper Plopper time and uh, give you guys some good tips and advice. I think it may add up to some fish, uh, add up to some good fish if you don't know much about the Whopper Plopper. And even if you do fish a lot, you'll probably learn something here. So it's be a good one for you guys. Um, real quick, I'd just like to invite everybody out there to, if you guys are interested, to consider becoming a member of the Intuitive Angling. It's a good way to support the channel. And members get extra videos that are, that are not seen by the public every week, including some access to my email address. So if you're interested, just go to my YouTube homepage and click on the join button and it gives you the information to become a member. It's much appreciated there. Okay guys, Whopper Ploppers, man. You guys have heard me talk about it. I've done several videos on the Whopper Plopper. And the, the videos that you guys have heard me talk about it is how the Whopper Plopper has lost its effectiveness compared to what it was when it first came out. And it's true, guys. There was This bait was sort of a secret in my part of the country for quite a few years. And there was an angler that won a big tournament on it here locally, sort of, uh, you know, gave up the secret that everybody had been keeping quiet for a couple of years. And over the next few years, you can go fishing hardly anywhere in this country without seeing some guys selling a Whopper Plopper, sort of the same with the Alabama rig. And as a result, um, the Whopper Ploppers are not as effective as they used to be, but they're still effective. You still have to have them in your box, and there's still times that the bass really key in on them, and um, we're going to get into that a little bit. So first of all, guys, I want to talk a little bit about setting it up. Um, a lot of people just throw them out of the package and um, you can catch fish on them out of the package, but there's some other things you can do to really help out. The first thing is I want to show you a little bit about the hooks, guys. Here's the, uh, this is right here is the standard whopper plopper hook that comes on it. It looks like to me it's about a, uh, uh, depending upon the hook style, it's probably about a number two. I'm going to guess like that round bend. It's an okay hook, but it's not the greatest. The greatest, the biggest thing you can do to help you land more fish on a whopper plopper because a lot of times you'll miss them they'll blow up on it is upgrade your hooks i go to two number one gamagatsu g finesse trebles these things are freaking awesome you can see they're you know a little bit bigger than the stock hooks that comes on it but there's something about this g finesse that really hooks them good it's a light hook it doesn't sink the bait down and you definitely want to go to a bigger hook um I am not a big fan of big hooks for the most part, but on this particular bait, it definitely helps. It doesn't kill the action any on it. So right off the bat, guys, up your, upgrade your hooks to these uh, G Finesse trebles. And also, guys, I'll put the uh, Bait Works link in the description if you guys want to get some of those trebles or some Whopper Poppers. It's a good place to get them there. Um, the next thing with it, guys, as far as, um, you know, just using it out of the package, one of the things that I like to do also is on the tail a little bit here is sometimes I'll take and I'll just bend this tail, get it a little bit pliable. And you can work, you can adjust this tail to get different frequencies. You can bend it out and move it in different positions. But I like to sort of work it a little bit like that. I, I like the thing to, to not be super stiff. It seems like it creates a different action if you work it and sort of pull it up a little bit. So just spend some time going back and forth on it like that. Gives it sort of a unique sound. Now, most of the time I'm throwing this on 40 pound tests, uh, Seaguar Smackdown Braid, maybe 50 pound tests at times. I use it on that Mega Bass uh, Roshi Launcher, the seven foot 11 inch rod. And it's a, it's a fairly medium tip, guys. One of, the, one of the things that's gonna help you land more fish on the Whopper Plopper, in addition to the hooks, is getting that right setup. Get you a long, medium action rod. And that launcher is really cool. It's got a nice parabolic bend to it. And um, it, allows that little bit of sort of the hesitation with that braid because once that once that fish loads up on it and that, and the tip flexes a little bit when you set the hook you stick them on that uh, cigar braid every time so that's the setup that i like to use on it so the next thing that you have to remember is uh the uh how you want to fish this thing and the areas you want to fish it in one of the reasons that the whopper plopper works really good in the summertime is because of the bluegill and perch spawn in the summer now you guys that watch the channel you probably get tired of hearing me talk about the perch spawning in the summer but guys i can't i can't over or underestimate or i can't overstate how important the perch spawn is to catching fish in the shallow water in the summertime in lakes across the country 
This is one of the reasons they're gonna bite a whopper popper good. So the areas that I look for are the back of the coves. Uh, even if the water's 90 degrees all the way between now up until September, I'm burning the back of the coves, uh, you know, using a variety of different colors. A lot of it just depends on the sunlight conditions. If it's bright out, sometimes I'll use more of a translucent like this. If it's a cloudy day or low light, I'll go to a more flat finish, a little bit brighter. These are my two primary colors that I really like though, again, depending upon the weather conditions. But I think one of the main things that you have to remember for summertime fishing is, um, sorry about the train guys, but, you know, since we moved out here, we have given up the uh, crotch rockets and the chargers. We got a train across the field out here. Um, doesn't ever blow its whistle, it just goes back and forth a lot. So you probably hear that a little bit. But um, the, the, anyway, the, the one of the main things you have to consider in the summer times is your retrieve. I think that the retrieve is everything as far as the whopper plopper goes in the summertime. You have got to fish that thing fast. It's like if you try to gurgle a little bit and if you, if you, if you, if you just throw that whopper plopper out there and you're just reeling like that, you're not going to catch hardly anything, guys. You need to throw that thing out there, point the rod tip straight at the bait, and, and reel it fast like that, stop it, fast like that, stop it. And what you want to do is you want, you want this thing to go zzz, 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 across the water like that. You, you don't ever want it to, to go without stopping over about three or four feet. So every, like every other turn of the candle, I'm doing a half turn and a hesitation, and then I'm speeding it up a little bit. So that hesitation and the speed is what generates those fish to bite in that shallow water a lot. Because when you've got shallow bass in the summertime of the year, um, even though they're up there feeding, a lot of times they're not real active during the day. I think a lot of them feed at night. So in the daytime of the year, you have to trigger them by a reaction strike. And you do that by that super fast retrieve, stop and go on the whopper plopper there. But the main thing, guys, if I had to tell you one thing uh, to, to, to get you to get some bites on it, is you just gotta keep it in your hand and throw it. It's sort of like a big swim bait. You're not gonna get a lot of bites on it you used to be able to but you can't anymore it's more of a quality fish bait you just have to put it in your hand and throw it and um, that's why a lot of people don't fish it because it's simply not near as productive as what it used to be but you know that's just sort of the that's the way fishing goes it's like something good comes along and people really work hard to try to keep it a secret and then somebody always gives it away and then uh, it's not near as effective after that Usually it comes with a tournament win. I, I can think back of a ton of different baits out there that guys knew about them, pros knew about them, and they, they, they closely guarded the secret. And what happens is you'll have a pro win a tournament on one of those baits, and all the other pros have been keeping it quiet, but you'll get one pro that wins a tournament, and they, they open their mouth and they start blabbing about it because they think they're going to get some type of a retainer or some type of financial compensation from that company for exposing it. And then once they do it, it just goes down the tubes. It's not near as effective with that. And the Whopper Plopper is one of those baits that that happened to too. So, but anyway, guys, they still catch fish. They're super fun to fish. When you get bit on a Whopper Plopper, it's an exciting bite. Um, that's just some tips and advice I'd like to pass along to you guys. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see you later.